We have read several verses and I want to go over them so that we can see the timing of the Word of God. You see, it may be in the Old Testament, but the Word of God is a timeless truth. Amen. There are things that we can see from the olden times that are still happening today. They may take another form or another shape, but the principle is the same. The system is the same. The sin is the same. The punishment is the same. The remedy is the same because we have the same God who will never change. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. So we have an immutable God. So we have read in Ezekiel chapter 22 and we started reading a while ago in verse number 17. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, This is what we need, the word of God. Amen. Many people today are trusting on the wisdom of men. They are looking at the popularity of men, and they are willing to follow these men according to their words. But what we need in order for us to be successful, in order for us to live a holy life, in order for us to live a God-glorifying life, what we need is the word of the Lord. Amen. Because the word of the Lord is truth. It is absolute. It will never change. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful and only the word of God can change us according to the design of God. So I thank God because Ezekiel said that the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Whatever the Lord will say, it is something that is true. Whatever the Lord will say, it is something that is profitable. Whatever the Lord will say, it is something for our good. And if the Lord will say a blessing, we need to thank God for it. If the word of the Lord will say a promise, we need to claim that promise from God. But if the, Lord, uh, the word of the Lord will come and he will say a warning, we need to heed. Why? Because God is a serious God. Paul says, my God is a terrible God and God means business. Everything that God says, he meant it. He's not going to say something with an empty meaning. The word of God is truth and we must heed the word of God. Amen. And in verse number 18, the word of God tells Ezekiel, son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. It means nothing. It means impure. It means things that defile something. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. You see, in God, we should come forth as gold. Amen? Do you remember Job? He said that when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. That should be a, the uh, a quality or the substance of the people of God. But God is telling uh, Ezekiel that my people, they become dross. They are brass. They are thin. They are iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even the dross of silver. They sank so low that God is not glorified with them anymore. In verse 19 the Bible says Therefore thus saith the Lord God because ye are all become dross. You see the whole of Israel was infected by something that is wrong. By something that is not right in the eyes of God. He said behold therefore I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. Gathering here means that God is going to do something to the people of Israel. And in verse 19, he declared and said, hmm? Yes, Kasundun 1920. Amen. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury. 
You see, in our time, God is being proclaimed only as a loving God. Only as a merciful God. Only as a forgiving God. Yes, God is all that. But then again, we need to understand that God is a just God. And God is a God that will not condone sin. He needs to do something because sin is against the holiness of God. He needs to step up and do something about sin so that His people will not continue to live in this kind of life. He says that I am going to gather you in my anger and in my fury. And He says, I will leave you here and melt you. You see, these are strong words. Eh, ako nga, nung nasa Bible school, sabi ko, nung ako'y niloko, sabi ko, lumabas ka! Wow, wasakin kita! Eh, ito, anong sabi ng Diyos? Ihipunin ko kayo at tutunawin ko kayo. Hindi lang pupulbusin. That is the anger of God. That's why you do not want to get the ire of God. You do not want to receive the wrath of God. You do not want God to get angry at you. You fight for all, but you do not fight against God. Amen? Because our God is a holy God. Our God is a serious God. And He says, I am going to melt you. And then in verse number 21, the Bible says, Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath. And ye shall be melted into the, in the midst thereof. So you see, judgment has been pronounced by God and this is something that God is going to do. But later on you will see that even though in the anger of God, you will always see His grace. You will always see His love. You will always see His mercy. But then again, do not exhaust the patience of God. Do not exhaust the love of God. Yes, it is something that you cannot exhaust but then God will come to a point in time when he have to step in and judge people who do not want to believe him whether they are saved or whether they are not. In verse number 22, the Bible says, As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. You know what God is saying? You have tasted the fury of the Babylonians. You have tasted the fury of the Medes and the Persians. You have tasted the fury of the Amalekites. You have tasted the fury of the Hittites. You have tasted the fury of all the people that have became your enemies. You have tasted the fury of Egypt, but my fury is different. You will know that it came from me because my fury is something with finality. You will understand that I am the one who is doing it to you because you are going to really taste the pain, taste the hurt that I am going to give unto you. He says, I the Lord have poured out my fury upon you. So you see, God is filled with judgment with His people. You see, when you are chosen as God's people, you must be living a high standard of life. Why? Because you have the name of God. Israel, it means the prince of God. And yet, they are acting like this. And yet, they are not a glorifying God in their lives. So that when God had to step in, He need to really judge them harshly because they have more responsibilities than those people in Nineveh where the Bible says they do not even know their right hand from their left hand. In verse number 23, the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. So, the second time in this chapter that God has spoken to uh, Ezekiel. Maybe the third or fourth time, but the second time in our text. He said, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. You see, his description of his land, it is a dirty land. It is a land that is fallow. The ground is fallow. You cannot even plant anything that will grow in Israel anymore. They are not going to be rained upon in the day of God's indignation. Because when God judges you, there is nothing that you can do. Verse number 25. 
There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. You see? Prophets should be speaking for God. Prophets are the voice of God. They are the representatives of God here on earth speaking the word of God to those that need the word of God. Whether they be words of blessings, whether they be words of cursing, whether they will be uh, uh, blessed or whether they will be cursed. But you know what happened? There is a conspiracy. They connive with each other. They agree with each other. I do not know if they talk to each other. I do not know if they had a meeting and they said, we are going to do this against God. I do not know. But one thing God says, they are speaking the same words. They are speaking and using the same language. They are telling and doing the same thing to my people. And you see, in our time, that's the same. There is as if a conspiracy that so many pastors have changed the doctrine of the Word of God. Amen. That they have taught things that are not according to the Word of God anymore. He says, there is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion, you see? They became like the devil. Because the devil is a roaring lion. That's the description of God. And these prophets are being described as roaring lion, ravening the prey. They are destroying their prey. They are destroying the people. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasures, the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. You see what the prophets are doing? They are preaching for the money. They are preaching for treasures. They are getting money. They are getting treasures. They are getting a precious uh, things from the people that they should be nurturing and admonishing in the Lord. You see, this is so timely that as I have said a while ago, many preachings today is about prosperity. They said, give and God will bless you. Listen, to whom are you going to give? To the church. And what will the pastor say? We will decide for the church. And they are the ones gaining from what people are giving to the church. And they will continue to encourage them to give. So that they can gain more from what the people are giving. Look at verse number 26. The Bible says, Her priests have violated my law. And have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. And I am profaned among them. And we will go back to this later because this will be our text. Verse number 27. The Bible says, Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey. The same thing. You see, Paul says that after my departing, there will come in unto you wolves in sheep's clothing, not sparing the flock. So you see that the timeliness of God's word, that even though it happened during the time of Ezekiel many, many thousand years ago, it is happening in our time today and will continue to happen until the coming of the Lord. Amen? The Bible says to shed blood and to destroy souls to get this honest gain. You see, that's the reason why so many pastors don't like me. Because I preach almost wherever I go that a pastor should not become rich. I don't care what they, they say that I'm rich. I'm still looking for it. I'm looking for the riches that they are telling that I've got. Actually, one son of a pastor said that we even have bodyguards whenever we go out. And I'm looking for those bodyguards because I couldn't find them. And they said that I have literally millions in the bank and I'm still looking for it. Help me find it. And I will give you a finder's fee if we will find that. I always preach that a pastor should not become rich. Why? 
Because I said, if there is a need, the pastor must be the first to give. The pastor must be the example. And listen, needs is always a part of the ministry of the church. There is always need in mission. There is always need in our outreaches. There are always needs in our church. There are needs among the people. There are needs around the world. And if there is always a need, why and why a pastor will become rich? Why and why is he going to hoard money for himself or to get dishonest gain? You know, during my time, you can count on your fingers pastors with vehicles with their own houses but now almost all have those things why because they're trying to do everything in order to make it in the ministry ladies and gentlemen making it in the ministry is not about money it is about glorifying the name of god it is about leading a soul to the saving knowledge of the lord jesus christ so they can taste blood they will shed blood they will destroy souls to get this honest gain kaya nga kapatid nakakalungkot eh minsan talaga hindi mo ma-imagine na darating tayo sa ganito na merong inirefer sa isang church sa Pilipinas unbeliever umattend ano tinanong kung magiging member ka ba magkano maibibigay mo hindi na bumalik sa simbahan yung tao bakit? Ganun ba sa inyo? Eh, nang tinong mga resulta, ganyan ba sa inyo? Itinatanong kung magkano maibibigay kung magiging member. Ah, sa isip niya, ano? Pera-pera ang ginagawa ng mga yan. And we are being affected. Why? Because so many people are getting away with it and nobody saying something against it. But my God had said something about it. My God said that I am going to melt you. My God said that I am going to destroy you. My God said if you will make a conspiracy against me, there is nothing that you can do when my fury will find you. My God will say something against these people and we must do the same. Amen? Look at verse number 28. And her prophets have dubbed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord, when the Lord hath not spoken. They are teaching things that are not taught by the word of God. Like for example, where can you find in the Bible where one pastor said, if you are baptized in a church, you will become forever a member of that church. So wherever in the world you may find yourself, you send your tithes back to your local church. Where in the Bible is that? But they will teach it. Why? Because of this honest gain. Why? Because they're speaking what God had not spoken. Look at first fruits offering. Where in the Bible can you find that Christians must give their one month salary to the ministry of the church? Or if they cannot keep it at once, lay away for 12 months. Hulugan. Parang bumbay. Siguro galing sa India yung doktrina na yan. Where in the Bible can you find that? But why? They can twist, they can manipulate, they can brainwash people so that they can get the hard earned money of these people given by God so that they can be a good steward of life. And they are robbing them of good stewardship. Who are teaching this? So many pastors in the Philippines now are teaching this. And they said, since we had this first fruits giving, we were able to buy properties. We were able to buy building. But they will not tell you, I was able to buy a good car. I was able to build a good house. I was able to buy all the gadgets. And I can go anywhere I wanted to go because I have the sole right to use the money that came in from the first fruits offering. That's the doctrine of the devil. Anyway, we were accused that we said that first fruits offering being taught today is the doctrine of the devil. 
Now I am categorically saying it is the doctrine of the devil because nobody that is taking first fruits offering can stand before the word of God and prove that it is required by God to every Christian and member of the local church. And if it is needed, I will stand before all of them and prove to them from the Bible that they are cheating their people in teaching first fruits offering. Anybody, it doesn't matter who, he may be the father of first fruits, he may be the mother of first fruits, he may be the brother of first fruits, he may be the sister of first fruits. I don't care. What I care is the truth from the word of God. Because my Bible taught me that whatever I give to God, it must be according to my heart and what God will lay in my heart. That is very evident in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9. But they are teaching things that are not spoken by God. In order to get unjust gain and to destroy the people of God. Look at verse number 29. The Bible says, The people of the land abuse oppression and exercise robbery. Kaya nga kadalasan, linggo-linggo, nangyayari sa church, hold up eh. Para bang, para bang galit na galit sila na may pera kayo? Para bang, ano pa ang paraan para makuha natin ng pera ng mga to? Anong offering? First fruits. Seed offering. White Christmas. Pilipinas na Pilipinas, kainit-init, white Christmas. Meron ngayon, Fresh fruit offering. Eh, tinamaan ka naman ng hindi mo na maintindihan na tumama naman sa iyo eh. Kung ano-ano. Pastor's Sunday. Ang alam ko sa Bible, ang mga lingkod ng Diyos nagpapakumbaba. Ngayon ang ginagawa ang mga lingkod ng Diyos, pilit na itinataas. Uy, sabi naman ng Bible ah, uh, obey them that had the rule over you. Totoo. Salute them. Totoo. You respect them. Render unto them double honor. Totoo. Pero hindi yung pastor ang nagdi-demand. At hindi niya ina-expect. Ang sa kanya, I am going to serve God. I am going to preach the word of God. What may happen, will happen. All I care is the glory of my God. You see what John the Baptist says? He must increase, but I must decrease. Eh ngayon, baliktad eh. Pagka Pastor Sunday, meron ditong, ano si, yung ano yung, tarpaulin picture ni Pastor, ang laki. Meron pang now showing. You see, we are robbing our people. We are inventing all teachings and doctrines that we can invent in order to get from our people. Ladies and gentlemen, they should be receiving from us the word of God and all the things that they need so that they can live life with holiness by the grace of God. The Bible says the people of the land abuse oppression and exercise robbery and vex the poor and needy. Mga kapatid, poor and needy, but still they have Vex them. Sabi nung pastor, kapatid, mapalad ka. Nakasakay ka sa sasakyan ko. Bibira, nakakasakay dyan. Eh, hindi mo ba alam na naguhulog yan yung mga miyembrong may hirap? Hindi mo ba alam na na nagsasakripisyo dyan? Yung mga miyembrong walang sasakyan? At pagkatapos may nakasakay, sasabihin mong, mapalat ka. Nakasakay ka sa sasakyan ko. Bibihira, nakakasakay dyan. Eh dapat nga isakay mo lahat ng miyembro eh. At sabihin mo habang nakasakay sila, sa atin ho ito. At ito po'y pinapagamit nyo lang sa akin para lalo nating mapaglingkuran ng Diyos ng maigi. So, hindi mo gagamitin para ipagyabang. Hindi mo sasabihin, tignan po niyo yung mga binigay sa akin ng miyembro, the best. 
May, dapat nga mahiya ka kapag ka ganun ang ginagawa. Dapat nga sabi mo, mga kapatid, hindi ako deserving nito. Hindi ako deserving. Salamat sa Panginoon. Salamat sa inyo. Wala talagang lahat. May doktrina pang ganito, ha? Huwag kang magkakaroon ng anumang bagay na mahihigitan mo ang pastor. Totoo yan. Merong member sa isang church mayaman. Mayaman siya. Actually, nagbigay siya ng mga sasakyan sa mga ilang ano eh, worker eh. Ganun siya kayaman. Pero hindi siya makabili ng maganda sasakyan na gusto niya kasi wala pa si pastor. So nung si pastor maibili nila, actually, hulugan yun, ng magandang sasakyan, pwede na siyang bumili. Pero, yung mas mababa pa rin ng konti. Kaya pastor, sapagkat walang miyembro ang dapat magkaroon ng mas maganda kesa kay pastor. Yung ginagawa nila. They are vex the poor and needy. Yay! They have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Mga kapatid na ka, kaya nga ini-imagine ko eh, paano kaya yung mga member na ang asawa nila mas maganda sa asawa ni pastor? Palagay ko sasabugan ng asido mo ka eh. Para ng pastor, mas maganda asawa mo kaysa sa asawa ko. Hindi ko maintindihan. Sabi nga nila, dapat pag si pastor, katabi ni mayor, kailangan malito sila at hindi nila alam kung sino si mayor at sino si pastor. Ay sabi ko, wag niyong gagawin yung delikado. Kasi pag pina-assassinate si mayor, malito yung mag-assassinate si pastor ang madali. Amen? You see, this is what they're doing. Verse number 30. Bilisan natin ang ating intro. Gutom na mga tao. And I sought for a man. This is one of the saddest verse in the Bible. In com- eh, this is comparable to John 6.66. This is so sad. You see, I told you a while ago, do you remember? In the midst of God's anger, there is grace and mercy and love. So even though God pronounced all of this judgment to them, still God sought for a man. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. You see? God said, only one. Give me one person. Only one person that will stand in the gap. Only one person that will have to plead for the people. Only one. And you saw, you, you, you see what God said? I found none. Biro mo naghanap siya ng isa lang lalaki ang nakita niya pa madre. He said, but I found none. Sabi niya, wala. So many prophets, not one is speaking the word of God. So many people, not one is speaking the word of God. Chosen by God, not one, glorifying the name of God. So verse number 31. Therefore, have I poured out my indignation upon them. God said, I cannot do anything because I am a just God. I cannot do anything. I have to step in and judge the very people that I called. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. So God, must destroy Israel because of what they did. What is it that actually get the ire of God from His people? Let us look and go to our text. And I will preach on Sikil chapter 22 and verse number 26. This is what the Bible says. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane, 
Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. The title of our message is, The Difference Will Make the Difference. The Difference Will Make the Difference. This book of Ezekiel was written during the time that the nation of Israel was in captivity in Babylon. Kaya dito nandit si Pastor Babylonio. In Babylon. For 70 years, God's people were judged for their failure to obey God and His commandments. Ezekiel was a priest who had been chosen by God to be a prophet to his people. He was formerly a priest and then he became a prophet so that he can speak the word of God to his people to declare to them through a series of prophecies, parables, signs, symbols, to communicate God's message of judgment to his exiled people. Though the nation of Israel was like a valley of dry bones, later you will see that God will make a miracle, perform a miracle to bring this nation back to life. Why? Because no matter how bad Israel is, they will continue to become the apple of God's eye. And whatever God promises, nothing can even change that. Yes, they may be consumed. Yes, they may be destroyed. But God is the God of the impossible. He can give life to dead people. Amen? And He can raise Israel out of the grave when Israel will realize that they need to serve the living God. So several times in Ezekiel's writing, he pointed out that the failure of God's people is not understanding the difference between the holy and the profane. Listen to me. Separation is a very important doctrine. But this is the doctrine that is not being preached anymore because today's preaching are unity even though we are different and ecumenicalism wherein we can be together because of love it doesn't matter what we believe but the preaching of the word of god from genesis until the revelation is separation the people of god must be separated must be sanctified only for him and not for other people or other intent and purposes what is difference the difference is defined as to divide to separate, to sever, to set apart, to make a distinction. Meaning that they're not the same. Difference to divide into parts. So this is what God is asking the prophets and the priests to do. That they need to show the difference between the holy and the profane. But for them, there is no difference anymore. What's important for them is the money that they can get from the people without actually preaching to them the difference. Why? Because when you tell people the truth, they will leave. But when you tell them something that is not true but will make them feel better, they will stay. There was a saying, if you want to fill the church, preach something that will make people good. But if you preach the truth, then you are going to make the church empty of people. But that is what we are called for. We are called to preach the truth. What are the things that we need to understand about the difference? Number one, it needs to be taught. It needs to be taught. Look at verse Ezekiel chapter 44, verse number 23. Let's, let's jump to Ezekiel 44 verse number 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane. God is very clear. That is his command to his prophets. That you will teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane. Why? Because they're not the same. They cannot go together. They cannot be in one place. You see, the main problem of Israel since time immemorial is they are composed of mixed multitude and if there is a mixed multitude there will be confusion if there is a mixed multitude there is not going to be unity and if there is a mixed multitude idolatry is always present because the mixed multitude will destroy the distinction of the people of god so he told them in ezekiel 44:23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. 
This is basic, but this is important. Even in our daily life, if it is clean, uh, unclean, don't eat it. Don't touch it. Don't get near it. If it is clean, then it is okay. So people must discern the difference between these things. And let's go to the New Testament. Uh, Titus chapter 2, 11 to 12. Titus chapter 2, 11 to 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation that appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. The same. Ungodliness, worldly lust, profane, unclean, and soberly, righteously, godly, clean, and holy. So, during the time, until the time of Titus, and until our time, we must teach the difference. It must be taught. That is why separation must be a vital part of the preaching in every local New Testament Baptist churches. But sad to say, they do not preach that anymore. You see, in America, most churches now in other states are required to have an LGBT pastor or representative in every church. Why? Because you need to cater to the LGBT community. Don't you know that they hate God? Don't you know that they do not stand about the things that God is standing for? Don't you know that God says in the beginning He created the male and female? And don't you know that the LGBT does not believe that? Because they believe that they have the right to be who they want to be. Have you seen about the weightlifter who broke all the female records? He was a male, but he said, I choose to be female today. And he lifted the weights and he broke all the female records. And after that, he decided, I am a male. And now competing in the male division. What's happening to our world? That is because we do not teach the difference between the profane and the holy. The clean and the unclean. We do not teach people the truth anymore. So they devise their own truth according to how they perceive truth is going to be. Do you remember in America, they are now teaching children 15 different genders. Is your child a boy or a girl? Oh, let's wait for his decision. Dati rati, pag pinanganak ang bata, alam mo agad kung lalaki o babae. Di ba? Paglabas na ganun, oh boy. Paglabas na ganun, oh girl. Sa Baptist Hospital, iba naman. Paglabas, ano-ano, hindi pa natin alam. Pag nakapantalon, lalaki. Pag nakapalda, babae. Ngayon, hindi na. Ano yung anak ko? Babae, lalaki, hindi natin alam. Hayaan mo siya mag-decide. Huwag mong pakialaman. Tapos, inisip pa niya, pusa siya. Ba? Matatawa kayo, pero sa Amerika, right nila yun. Yung ang tanda-tanda na, 60 years old, inisip niya na siya ay ano eh, bata eh, kaya nagpapaampon. Why? Because very, very seldom in our pulpits are this thing being taught. You see, what is holy? Holy means sacred or consecrated. What is profane? It means desecrated, polluted, defiled, stained, broken. And people who will decide for themselves have a broken brain. Sa Tagalog, basag ang pula. Yun ang tawag natin doon. The life of a believer should be described as holy and not profane. Amen. Our minds should be holy, not profane. Our mouth should be holy, not profane. Our manner should be holy, not profane. Our attitude should be holy, not profane. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what people say, but as people of God, we must live a holy kind of life. And we must differentiate ourselves from those who are living 
otherwise. He says, some say that preaching and teaching uh, in the church, the difference between holy and profane will keep us from building a big church. I don't care. I'd rather have a small church that knows the difference between the holy and the profane. Amen. That knows the difference between the clean and the unclean. Mga kapatid, tignan nyo nga ito. Iilan-ilan nga lang tayo. Pero tignan nyo pa yung problemang dinadala sa atin ng kaaway. Isipin mo kung titriple o magsasampun doble itong membro na ito at yung same na problem dadali ng jablo Mga kapatid, isang taon lang patay na ako. Eh, ba't kasi pastor, dinidibdib mo? Abay, ano gusto mong gawin ko? Hayaan ko lang yung walang kwenta. Hindi naman tayo nakikipaglaro sa Diyos eh. Kaya kita nyo, di ba? Iba sa inyo sinasabi, Pastor, ang na bagay, pinapalaki natin, a little living, living at the whole lamp, hindi nyo ba alam yun? Ang nagpapalaki talaga, yung maliit. Walang nagsimulang malaki. Tama, mali. Kaya, Pastor, ang liit, pinapansin mo. Eh, kailan natin papansin yung paglaki? Pastor, usok pa lang yan. Hintayin natin mag-apoy. Hindi yun. If there is a danger, let us do something about it. Why? We might regret it tomorrow. And the only way we are doing that is because we mean business with God. Alam nyo, pwedeng hindi ako may stress. Huwag ko na lang pansinin. Huwag na lang natin pansinin. Huwag na lang tayong magpansin ang gawin na lang ng uh, bawat isang gusto nilang gawin. But are we a church then? Are we glorifying God? Are we then the children and the people of God? That is what we need to ask ourselves. Yes, we are not perfect. But at least we are trying our best by the grace of God to glorify God in our lives. And that is what is important between God so it doesn't matter if we build a big church or not. Why? Because it is not my job to build the church. That is God's job. My job is to preach the word of God and to preach the difference between the holy and the profane. Amen? Amen. Number two, not only that it must be taught, but number two, it must be implemented. It must be implemented. Look at our text. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. So it's referring to the priests of that day that they failed to implement the separational standard between the holy and the profane. And in the New Testament, he's referring to us and the leaders that they should implement the holy and the profane. That is why even in our membership, we want to see to it that those that we will accept are saved genuinely by God. Hindi tayo tanggap na lang ng tanggap. Kailangan matiyak muna nating ligtas because we need to know the difference between the holy and the profane. Pastor, mape-perfect ba natin? Hindi. Pero at least lumalapit tayo. Kasi iba, ay hindi mo rin lang malalaman, huwag ka na mag-isip. No. Mag-isip ka. Kasi hindi mo man malamang lahat, may malalamang ka. Parang ganito, wala naman makaka-perfect sa exam, huwag na tayong mag-review. Ay di bagsak ka. Pero pag nag-review ka, hindi mo nga na-perfect, malay mo naka-99 ka. O di mataas yung grade mo. The same thing. So these things must be implemented. Why? Because we are the people of God. And as people of God, we need to live a life that is separated from the profane. Not only that, but number three, it needs to show. We need to show it. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. So you may ask me this, if I am saved and I cannot lose my salvation, so what difference does it make if I live a holy life or not? Hmm. Yan ang tanong. Anyway, Pastor, I'm saved. And I cannot lose my salvation. Do you believe that? 
that if you're saved, you cannot lose your salvation? So if I cannot lose my salvation, what difference does it make if I am going to live a holy life or live the kind of life that I want for myself? Anyway, no matter what happened, I will go to heaven because I am already saved. So what difference will it make if I am going to do that? Let us look at this. Number one, it will make the difference between by being happy or miserable. If you are going to live a holy life, you're going to be a happy Christian. Amen? You're going to be a contented Christian. But if you will live a profane life or an unclean life, then you are going to be miserable in your existence as a Christian. Why? Because no Christian can be happy living in sin. Amen? The Holy Spirit will see to it that you cannot be truly happy if you are living against the will of God. You see, today's society is obsessed with being happy. The word will tell you, do anything that will make you happy. But most of the time, things that can make us happy are things that are against the will of God. So if you follow the philosophy of the world, then Satan will steal you of your joy. He will kill you and he will destroy you. A life of profanity and uncleanness has never produced a happy life. Look at Proverbs 28, 14. Look at that. Happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. You see? If you're living a profane life, you will fall into mischief. And that is a place that you do not want, you do not want to be. Look at Proverbs 13, 15. 13, 15 of Proverbs. The Bible says, God, good understanding, giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. You see? If you will not live for God, then you are going to live a hard life. Life. Why? Because we are designed to glorify God. We are not designed to glorify ourselves. It is only when we serve others that we can find the real fulfillment of life. Because no one liveth for himself and no man dieth for himself. Amen? We live for others and we die for others. Because this is what the Lord Jesus Christ showed us. Number two, it's going to make the difference between an answered or an answered prayer. Look at Isaiah chapter 1, 13 to 15. Isaiah 1. Isa. Yeah. 30, 13 to 15. He says, Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Suyang suya na siya. Sabi niya, nakakasuya kayo, nakakainis na kayo. Yung dinadala niyo, kinamumuhi ang ko. Kahit yung nagmi-meeting kayo, nag-worship kayo, namumuhi ako, sabi ng Diyos. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yeah. When ye make many prayers, I will not hear your, hear. your hands are full of blood. You see, if you live for God, your prayers will be answered. But if you are not going to live for God, then you are going to have an unanswered prayer for Psalm 66, 8 and says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And sometimes we wonder why we have no answered prayers. That is because we regard iniquity in our life. Number three, it will make the difference between you becoming an asset or a liability. An asset in the church are people who are serving God. 
and a liability are those people who are serving self. Do you remember Achan? When they won the battle, he hid Babylonian garments and silver and gold. And then they were defeated at Ai. And God had to inquire, ask uh, Joshua to inquire because there is a culprit. There is a person not living for God. You see, only Achan did what is wrong, but the whole Israel suffer. That is sometimes what we do not understand. That is why we care for each other because even if only one will hurt, we all hurt. Amen. We need to understand this, brethren. If one will fail, then all of us will fail. Why? Because we are connected. We are a body. Tupukan mong masakit yung hinlalaki. Hayaan mo yun, hinlalaki lang yan. Kadikit mo yan eh. Nararamdaman mo yan. Tupukan mong masakit ang mata mo. Dama ng lahat yan, masakit ang ulo. Okay lang kung mabali ang kanang buhok. Maaring okay pa yun. Pero mga kapatid, lahat tayo ay isa. Nararamdaman dapat natin ang nararamdaman ng bawat isa. Kaya pag may bumapagsak, hindi tayo natutuwa. Yung ginawa natin pagdidisiplina, masakit sa atin yun. Pero kailangan natin gawin. Why? Because we want the person to recover. And we'll be able to continually serve God in His life. So even though only Achan did it, the whole of Israel was affected. And again, that is why we mind even the smallest things that is happening in the church. Kasi mga kapatid, minsan alam nyo, marami tayong nasasabi, na kaya natin nasasabi, kasi hindi natin alam ang Bible. Hindi natin kasi binabasa. Pero kung binabasa lang natin, maintindihan natin ano ginagawa natin sa church eh. We will understand why we are like this. Why we are trying to protect the church. Why we are trying to put a uh, a wall around the church. Why? Because there are so many enemies that will try to destroy us. And we have to be careful on how we do these things by the grace of God. So as a member of the church, if you choose a life of the accursed and the profane over the life of holy and consecrated, you are hindering the effectiveness and the power of God to work in the church. Who committed the sin? Achan, right? Look at Joshua 7.1. Achan yan, ha? Achan, Achan, Achan. But look at what God said. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. Who committed the sin? Achan. Who is guilty? Israel. Amen? That is the reason why we are like this. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Sabdi, the son of Zira, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Hindi ba tayo, hindi man po ako may gawa nung patako? Kasi nga, iisa tayo. Yun ang hindi natin maintindihan kadalasan. Kaya nga, nagpapanalanginan tayo, nagmamahalan tayo, nagtutulungan tayo, nagpapalakasan tayo, nakakargahan tayo ng bigat ng isa't isa, nag encourage tayo. Bakit? Kasi apektado tayo sa lahat ng mangyayari sa isa. And that is why we need to do this by the grace of God. And lastly, kita nyo, masaya ako, last na. Hindi ba masaya rin kayo? Amen. O kita nyo, it will make the difference between be becoming a blessing or a curse or receiving blessings or curse in your life. God has given everyone a choice. It is not a complicated choice. It is very simple. The terms of God are simple and the results are simple. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15 until 20 and we will end here. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 15 until 20. God said, See? Kita mo? Ang Diyos. 
See? I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Holy, profane, clean, and unclean. Verse number 15. I 16. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land, whither thou goest to possess it. 17. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away, and worship other gods and serve them, it's up to you. Amen? It's up to you. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Parin sabi ni Paul, when he preached the whole counsel of God. I am free from the blood of all men. He said, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. Kita niyo may advice ang Diyos. Choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live because your decision will affect other people. And the last verse that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. Ladies and gentlemen, God today has given each and every one of us a choice. Let us choose to be holy, not profane. Let us choose to be clean, not unclean. Let us see to it that the difference will make a difference in the life of many people. Shall we stand up?